Yeah, so um, so Trump raises 130 million in August. Mm -hmm. She raises 360 million in August, which is like almost three times as much money as he has. And and to be fair, you know, a bunch of the GOP strategists I talk to, they always remind me that you know he won in 2016, even though he was outraised right. by Hillary Clinton. But then, you know, he was outraised by Biden in 2020 and he lost. So, mm -hmm. y you know, I, I can't say for sure, like, oh, just because Harris is outraising him, it's automatic, oh, he's going to lose. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle, and I'm joined today by national political correspondent Mabinti Korshi. Mabinti, the hurricane has become a really big issue. It hit some battleground yeah. states for the presidential race. A lot of talk of, over whether the federal government's response uh, to the devastation cause has been sufficient. Mm -hmm. What are sort of what's sort of going on here? Yeah, so the the hurricane hits over the weekend, and we have Donald Trump who immediately goes to Valdosta, Georgia, you know, where he basically says the Biden Harris administration is failing the American public, and you know he says the Biden administration isn't responding to the needs of Georgia. <laughs> the Biden campaign hits back, says he's lying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the White House says the reason why Biden and Harris couldn't immediately go to these devastated states is because, you know, they have security detail. Right. It's not, you know, easy just to show up. Right. <laughs> and, you know, if, you're, if your roads are underwater, it mm -hmm. makes it even harder. So they, so Biden and Kamala Harris, they wait a few days before they head down to Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. And the thing I find interesting is they both tried to emphasize this bipartisanship response to the to the hurricane and its devastation. So Biden thanks the governor of South Carolina, who's a Republican, Henry mm -hmm. McMaster. Um, he thanks Roy Cooper, governor of North Carolina, who's a Democrat. He, and, you know, he announces that he's sending a thousand active duty troops to help people devastated by the hurricane. Um, you know, Kamala Harris also announces in Georgia that the government is going to reimburse all local costs in Georgia. So they, you know, they're really trying to dispel the sort of disastrous aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, where, you know, there was widespread outra outrage mm -hmm. over how um, former President George Bush handled it. And so they're trying to beat back against that because, again, we're, we're roughly five weeks before the election. And, you know, when Hurricane Sandy hit in 2012, that was like roughly three weeks before the election. Right. And so they, you know, that October surprise, <laughs> sure. they're trying to beat back against that and, you know, show this adequate response because at this point, anything could shape the election. The polls are so close that, you know, any small thing could really impact votes. Right, and, and you know, Hurricane Sandy tended to hit bluish states yeah. that were relatively safe for the Democrats in that election. Um, you know, Hurricane Katrina hit a red state and yeah. it also wasn't an election year. Yeah. These are two of the closest, Georgia and North Carolina are two of the closest states in this race. Yeah, as you were just talking, I realized that I should have said that <laughs> Georgia, North Carolina, these, these are probably like the two biggest states outside of Pennsylvania sure. that are going to determine who wins the election, you know. If, if Trump wins Georgia, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, he, he gets the 270 electoral college votes. If Harris can, can flip North Carolina especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, it puts her even closer to 270 electoral college votes. So it's not lost on me that, you know, Trump immediately heads down to Georgia. Right. And, and Harris, who's the ticket, you know, the ticket nominee, she also heads down to Georgia while Biden goes to South Carolina first, right. which is not quite a battleground state in mm -hmm. the way um, that Georgia and North Carolina are. And, and to be fair, um, you know, Vice President Kamala Harris also announced she'll be, she'll be going to North Carolina. Um, so I don't want to politicize a hurricane because people have been devastated, mm -hmm. but it's not lost that they both, both candidates have immediately gone down to these states that will, you know, pretty much determine the next president of the U.S. So former President Trump has announced his latest fundraising figures. Seems like a pretty impressive number, but when you compare it to some other figures, maybe not so much? Well, yeah. So. You know, in September, he raises $160 million, which is $30 million more than he did in August. And, you know, to put it in context, th this is when he survives those two assassination attempts. Mm -hmm. um, so Butler happens in July, so August is the first full month we have. And then we have that attempt at the Florida Golf Club. Right. So September, you know, we have the full figures for that. That's $160 million. Mm -hmm. So it is an increase. However, the, the caveat is, you know, four years ago when he was running against Biden, 
in September of 2020, he had raised like almost like $248 million. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit less mm -hmm. than what he's used to. And of course, Vice President Kamala Harris, she hasn't released her September figures yet. So we, we don't know you know, how much of a, of a deficit is happening sure. between these two campaigns. So on the one hand, it's, it's good money. It's mm -hmm. nothing, you know, to knock down. But on the other hand, it does suggest, you know, there's a lack of fundraising happening compared to four years ago. And, you know, people could just be exhausted. Right. I mean, they've been tapping their small donor base quite yes, a lot. Yes, And this is his third campaign. Mm -hmm. And Harris, since she's gotten in, has really been a fundraising juggernaut. Yeah, so um, so Trump raises 130 million in August. Mm -hmm. She raises 360 million in August, which is like almost three times as much money as he has. And and to be fair, you know, a bunch of the GOP strategists I talk to, they always remind me that, you know, he won in 2016, even though he was outraised right. by Hillary Clinton. But then, you know, he was outraised by Biden in 2020, and he lost. So, mm -hmm. you know, I I can't say for sure, like, oh, just because Harris is outraising him, it's automatic. Oh, he's gonna lose, because sure. um, we've seen two campaigns where he's been outraised and still won, and been outraised and still lost. So, mm -hmm. again, this is a completely close race, and mm -hmm. any anything could move the needle. Um, and I should say thank you for bringing that up. But the September figures, the campaign was very clear to emphasize that. Most of the donations, 96% of the donations to the Trump campaign were less, were under $200, with mm -hmm. the average being $60. So that does suggest that there are plenty of y your regular average American who still believe in Trump's campaign, mm -hmm. even if, you know, they can't write. Massive. Yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> exactly. Right. But if, if enough people write them in a, enough numbers, then yeah. you could at least have the cash on hand to do what you need to do. Exactly. Stretch. Yes. And I should say he has more than 200 million cash on hand mm -hmm. in, in September. So again, not broke, not hurting, right. but yeah. Yeah, that's always a fun comparison to make. Yeah. While the dollar to dollar ratio doesn't necessarily decide who wins, yeah. everybody needs to have at least as much as th they can to, for their ground games to function yes. in the battleground states. Absolutely, and again, with, with five weeks left to go, I mean, we only have one more month right. of, of figures, and so, uh, this is the time where all of the, especially the outside groups, where they're they're pouring as much money as they can into the battleground states. It's now or never at this yes. point. Now or never. Thank <laughs> you, Mabinti. Thanks. You can read Mabinti and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.